All right, what's up, guys? Stock Jock here. Let's look at the trades I made today. As you can see up here, I'm up 1173.77 on the day. Not too shabby. Any day you can make a thousand dollars in a day is just awesome. And it's 12:38 Eastern. Great day so far. And let's just go over kind of the moves that I made. So right down here are my orders. The first one of the day was Jag X. So Jag X was my first trade of the day. I got in at 9:33, which is right here, and I exited at 9:34. So I held it one minute. I got in at 160, uh, basically 161, and I exited at 167. This was just the first trade of the day. It was hitting the high of day Momo scanners, and it had volume coming into it. And it's a it's a low float stock, so I know it can move. And it had news, all good things. So I played it for basically seven cents on two thousand shares. That's like 140 bucks, right? Minus commissions. So that was the first trade of the day. Just getting a, getting my piece of that scalp as it was running up. Then I played Jag X again at 9:36. So let's zoom in just a hair so you can kind of see what I'm. I'm talking about so I played it again at 936 which is right here basically we just watching the candles looking for candle over candle so I saw it at 935 it was right here and I wanted to play the, the little pullback and the curl up again and this little move right here is what I was playing uh, I, I initially played this move I was waiting for a pullback and then I wanted to try that second move up so as it was curling, and I'm watching this, the one minute chart right here, I'm watching that, and as it makes a new high, meaning here's this candle, and as soon as the current candle broke the previous candle's high, I was in. I got, I grabbed two cents out of this. It wasn't a huge win for me, but again, this is a more risky play, and it went all the way to 184, but what was happening is I was watching the L2, and the bid started getting smacked. And as much as I wanted to hold through this run, and you know hindsight's 2020, I didn't feel comfortable. So I took my two cents, which was 40 bucks, and I moved on. But the stock moved without me, went all the way to 184, which would have been a much better win. But nonetheless, a win is a win. All right, so the next stock that I played was MPET. And this one we were looking, I was in a chat room and we were talking about it. And the daily looked really good. This is my daily chart down here. The daily, as you can see, had this huge run up from, golly, what was it? $1.20 all the way to seven seventeen. Like that's a huge run up. So as it started to pull back here, as you can see on the daily, start to flatten out and that just kind of tells you that the sellers and the profit takers are gone so a lot of people were watching this to see if the buyers would come back in and in the chat room i was in we were talking about it and we ended up trying to play this move over here over this this is yesterday's high which is 567. so we were looking for the break of 567 as a potential move to see if more buyers would come in and being a part of a chat room helps because you have 500 plus people all looking at the same thing. And if 500 plus people buy a stock, it's going to move. So sure enough, as 567 broke and I got in at uh, 568.75, it ran up to 658. And let's see, I exited at 591, which... Let's see, 568, 591 is right around here in this level. So I played this initial move right here. Well, the stock ran all the way to 650, and I did play it again. But you know, I'm locking in my, oops, I'm locking in my profits, and that's always key to do. Is just lock your profits in. Green is green. Don't try to hit the home runs. Take your wins and move on, especially if you're a day trader. Oh, why does it keep doing that? There you go. Especially as a day trader, take your wins, move on. So 568 is where I got in for the break of the previous day's high. And I exited 
at 591. And there was no, no re, rhyme or reason to me exiting here. I was just up. I was profitable. So I'm just going to take it and move on. If the, if the chart sets up, I'll play it again, in which it did. So I ended up playing it again. See, after it popped up to here to um, 616, 615 area, I was watching it because I know now, okay, it's hitting everybody's high day Momo scanners. Everybody's got their eyes on it now. So let's look for the next move. So 954 is when I got back in again. All right, so we had a little bit of a pullback here. And I'm looking on the one minute chart at this point, and I want to see it break the current high, which was at the time like 615. So pull back as we get a little candle over candle action really quick. I got in and it moved from 609 my entry to six. I, I exited 619. But as you can see, it went all the way to 27, 35, and then it started curling again. But again, win is a win. I'll take my 10 cents. 2,000 shares, that's $200. Easy money. Tops was my next play. This one, former runner. This thing always likes to move in big moves when it gets going. So I love playing Tops. It's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite stocks to play currently. But Again, it's not something I want to hold because it can just go down as fast as go up. But so Tops was hitting the high of day Momo scanners, high of day scanners, and I was looking to play it. So Tops made this move up, and I I used to make the poor decision of trying to to trying to get in this initial move. This is the five minute chart over here. This initial move. This is the one minute. I, I would chase this. This is this is a huge move from four dollars basically to four fifty. That's a fifty cent move. But in my previous trading lifetime, I would try to just jump in here and try to get in, thinking, oh, I'm going to miss the boat. Well, that's how I used to lose money because more than likely I would have got in at four fifty and I would end up selling, thinking the bomb's going to fall out at four twenty eight or four whatever down here. So instead, I'm watch. This is my favorite play. I'm watching the five minute candle over candle. So we had the run up here. This is the five minute chart. It pulled back. And as we see here, this is the candle that really intrigued me. So as this candle was going off, I'm waiting for the next candle to break this high. So at 439, when this candle opened up, I'm looking for the break of 439. And sure enough, that's what happened. I got in at 442 as it was breaking this candle and it ran all the way to 476. So the pullbacks happening. You can see here's the volume down here. The volume's declining. It's a good sign that it's ready to go bullish again. Here's that little small candle, which is great. And I'm looking for the next candle to open up and start breaking above this five minute candle as soon as 439 broke that's my time to try it out got in at 442 and i just scalped i mean this thing went all the way to 477 but i i just scalped it for um let's see three or four cents i got out at 446 probably watching the l2 and it probably just didn't look right to me so um i bailed out but again Another huge move. That was the that was a good play right there. So we went back to NPET. I was watching this one for the pullback. This is the five minute chart. I was watching for the pullback, and then I wanted the candle over candle in the five minute. So here's the pullback happening. As you can see, the volume's declining as the pullback continues down this trend. So I'm looking for the next five minute candle to break the high of the previous five minute candle. So the previous high here was 622 so when this candle opened up i was looking this whole way down i was looking and there's some people i was talking to i said all right watching for the break of 628 watching for the break of 626 watching for the break of 622 and finally we got that break of the previous five minute candle which happened here so i got in at 624 6, uh, 625 and it did go to 634, but I couldn't get the bids to go up with it. So the bids stayed around 626 to 627. And I'm like, uh, 
I was really hoping to see volume come in. That's another indicator. So you've got to see volume come in. When you have this candle over candle movement here, you need to see volume come in. So I ended up bailing. I got a couple cents out of it. I made like 60 bucks, I believe, on that trade. But it's not bad. $60 in two minutes. I'll take that any day. Some people don't even make $60 an hour. A lot of people don't make $60 an hour. I'll take $60 in two minutes. No problem. So HPJ was a news play. Benzinga is where I heard it. If you do not have a subscription to Benzinga, this is an absolute must. I use Benzinga a lot. I love it. There's a coupon code down in the description of this video. So you need, you absolutely need to have a news source and Benzinga pays for itself. No problem. This is just one. Uh, Benzinga reported that HPJ had some news out with a definitive with a non-binding agreement with another company and the stock started moving really quick. This is a semi low float stock. So they tend to move fast. So news came out. It ran from basically 235 all the way to 320. That's almost a whole dollar. That's that's a big move. So I heard the news and I got in at 295 looking for the break of $3. I just wanted a $3 scalp and that's what we got. Got in at 295 and I exited at 303 I believe for a gain of 8 on 2000 shares 160 bucks. I held that literally 15 seconds. Again, this was an, this was already up quite a bit. I know when it gets to a whole dollar, like three dollars is a whole dollar. Obviously, a lot of people want to see that break of a whole dollar. So I like to scalp that, especially on news. It, it tends to happen more more times than not. I was a little bit more risky of a play, but I was already up on the day, so I felt okay doing it. Took two thousand shares and made some money off of that. At eleven fifteen, I went back to MPET. What I was seeing here is we got the pullback. Candle over candle, another pullback, candle over candle. That's what I was looking for. So we had the pullback, candle over candle, a little run up. Here's the pullback here. This candle, pretty bullish in my opinion. It did drop down, but it came back up towards the close of the candle. So I'm looking for this candle to break the high of the previous candle, which was 643. So as it looks like it's going to break 643, I was going to go long. We already had the trend here happening, so I was just thinking I was going to do it again. So when that happened, I got in actually at 642 in the anticipation of 643 break, and I got out at 646 basically. So five cents, 2,000 shares, 100 bucks. It went all the way to 658, and I was hoping to break the 650 mark, but it just wouldn't on the L2. I got out, sure enough, it ran after that. But hey, five cents, 2,000 shares, 100 bucks. I held that for about 40 seconds. 100 bucks in 40 seconds, who doesn't want that? So at 11.30, I was watching HPJ. We had the spike up on news. It was coming back down on the pullback. We had this nice little candle right here, which let me believe that this one is going to have the move. I'm looking for the candle over candle, right? As soon as it would break 290, I was going to go in. Sure enough, I did. I got in at um, 287, actually, because volume started to come in. I was thinking, okay, we're going to break 290. We did break 290, and it got up to 296, and I would, I would have loved to have taken profit there, but the bid never came up. And I usually just sell at the bid. I sell market. Uh, sell out the bid of an on market order or whatnot, but the bid never rose on the L2. Just people kept taking the ask, but the bid would never come up. So I never had an opportunity to sell. And I ended up actually taking a one cent loss on this or about a one cent loss on this, 20 bucks. And it spiked up and came right back down, which is a bear sign to me. When, it, when we have this candle over candle move, I wanna see it stick. I wanna see the candle over candle move happen and then continue to happen. But in this case, we, it popped up and came right back down. That's a bearish sign to me. And I actually ended up going uh, short at 11.35 because of that move. So at 11.35, I was looking to go candle under candle. So we had this candle right here. I was looking for the break of 284. So as soon as 284 looked like it was about to break, I was gonna go short. So I actually shorted at 283. I covered at 
279.8, basically 280 for about three, three and a half cents on 2,000 shares, 60, 70 bucks. Um, I would have liked to have hold, held longer, but it just, people kept hit, hitting the ask and I was down a little bit. And, you know, if it doesn't happen in a big move right away, I just, I like to take my three, four, five cents, move on, find the next stock that's setting up. And as you can see, it did come back up to 293, and now it's down on the day at you know 274, whatever. ISIL is a trade that I took. Um, it had news yesterday that it chose who they're gonna sell to. Supposedly, the news is that they're going to sell next week. It's gonna close next week. Price target is a is like uh, three billion dollars which comes out to be roughly $22 a share. So that's why you saw this huge spike yesterday. It went all the way up to 20, 28. So today I'm kind of looking for a little bit of follow through, maybe shorts covering, um, people trying to get in before next week uh, when the deal actually goes through or potentially goes through, you know, and you never know, something could happen. So I was looking for just basically a high day break. I set my alert for over 1980. I would go long just to try it out. And um, by the time my alert went off, I got in at 19, oh, 1985 and I sold for 1988. So basically this move here, uh, I got in, my alert went off in 1980, finally got in at 1985 and sold, I held this actually much longer than I wanted to, sold up here at around 1988 right here. And it touched the high of day of 1990, but then just sold off. So I'm glad I, I grabbed my three and a half cents, another 60, 70 bucks. And that's where we sit right now. Oh, Nero. I forgot about Nero. This was a stock that I heard on Benzinga. So news comes out. As you can see, here's the news. It spikes up. And I just played that for... Um, three cents. I got in at 157 out at 160. Heard the news, just jumped in real quick. There was really not much follow through, but you know what? 60, 70 bucks. I'll take it. It all adds up. So those are my trades for today right now. Like I said, I'm up 1173 on the day. You don't have to hit home runs. You can grab those three, four cents at a time. And that's basically how I make my money. Last month, I made $18,000 doing this grabbing three, four cents at a time. I usually only trade 2,000 shares. Look at that, 2,000 shares, 2,000 shares. It's just 2,000 shares, 60, 70 bucks at a time. Occasionally I'll get 10 cents, which is be $200. Rinse and repeat all day long. So if you have any questions on my trading style, let me know. Uh, you can send me an email or you can find me on Google Plus at StockJock. Uh, my email is stockjock 8 all that stuff is down in the description. I love answering questions. I love helping people make money. Two of the main reasons why I'm successful is because I'm a member of a chat room and I'm a member of a news service. Those two things are so key and they pay for themselves, I promise you. If you're interested in learning more about that, send me a message. I'd be more than happy to tell you about that. Benzinga is running a special right now. If you use my coupon code, you'll save yourself some money. This is so key to have is a news source. You hear breaking news and anytime you can get in some breaking news before everyone else does, you're going to make money. It's just great. I have it on all day and I make money on it basically every single day. So look in the description down below for that coupon code. Like, subscribe, share the videos. I want to help you make money. If you have any questions, please ask. I want to help. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.